Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalami. And today I'm very excited because we have a very, very special guest today that you're going to be so thrilled about. And it's Saga Constantine, and she is an author, a teacher, a speaker, and a lecturer. And today she's going to talk about how to be your own rock. And I love that. So um, Saga, it has been so I'm just so happy that you're on the show today. I am just honored to have you in our presence. Tell everybody a little about yourself and, and what you do. It's so great to be here. And I'm really thrilled because uh, I, I think it's so exciting to be here with you. Well, I teach a lot in companies where I teach about personal growth, communication, personal development, and change. And on a daily basis, I go out to small companies and big companies and try to make a difference for both the leaders, the managers, the employees, so they get to know themselves better. And, you know, for me, it's always important that, uh, that I do it in an easy way where people can begin to actually move forward as soon as I'm out of the door. They know exactly what to do. And that's what I'm doing in my books as well. So when I'm not out on the road, I'm writing books, um, trying to share my knowledge with, uh, you know, as many people as possible. So, but before that, I actually worked in television many years ago. So, so my whole journey started working in television where I was a director and I experienced so much bad and really, really poor leadership, which actually made me quit my job and uh, become self-employed and begin to, to dive into all this psychology about the brain and behavior and habits and uh, communication. So that's kind of been my, my way to getting where I am today. That's wonderful. Now, was that one of your major inspirations for your latest book, How to Be Your Own Rock? Well, I actually had a lot of inspiration for my book because it's kind of all the greatest tools and insights that I have experienced and learned and used myself. My journey, you know, coming from television and then not knowing what to actually do with my life or what to work with because yeah. I was I was really... Um, I was really happy being a director, but I could also feel that I didn't feel happy inside. I, I might have been a success looking from the outside, but inside myself, I lost myself more and more every single day. So I had to find a way to come back to myself, build off my self-esteem, get to know myself better, get to know my emotions and my thoughts and my, how my brain works and survival mechanisms. Yeah. And all of that, you know, I decided to 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 put in a book. So you have this whole view on a on a person. You have the very nerdy stuff about the brain, which I try to make really simple and easy to understand. Yeah. But you also have the personality types, which is so amazing. I I I've talked to a lot of people who say, Oh, that is really a great part of the book because it's it's so easy to use. And a lot of people they they kind of laugh a little bit when they see themselves in these personality types, but they also get to recognize their children and their partner. Yeah. And then they say like, oh, now I understand why we always argue about this and this and this, you know. So, yeah. so there's really all the way around a human being how to, to really rely on yourself. I thought that was very important. Oh, I love that. And and it is so true. Like when you understand that the personality types of the people around you in your life, you start to understand why they are who they are, why they react certain ways, what's going to trigger them, what's not going to trigger them, mm -hmm. and a way that you should speak to them too. Because each personality you um, type, you really have to speak to them differently. So you can't just like say, you know, you, you could have one message and four people in the room. Yeah. And if you say it, directly to all four, you might have four different responses develop, you know, dependent on what type of person they are. So you really have to really think about before we verbally speak, how we want to say, you know, a constructive message to a group of people that might have different personalities, and they're going to, they're going to interpret it probably differently, each one of them. Absolutely. And just to give you an example, because I use this all the time, I'm, I'm a changer and a doer type. I'm, I love to change things and I'm yeah. really fast moving forward. Yeah. But my kids, I have two boys, one is 13 and one is 22. They're more feelers and thinkers. And, you know, I just have to be so careful when I talk to them, because if I'm too fast saying, OK, so what do you think? And should we do this? Should we go there? 
they're like, oh, they don't know what to say. So yeah. always very patient saying, okay, you know, I'm thinking about this and maybe you could also think about it and then you can let me know. So I'm trying to be really patient. Yeah. But I know that's the only way to include them and make them feel good in our conversations. Right. And, and that's really the, the great part when you see these uh, ways of communicating and yeah. uh, collaborating with other people. It doesn't matter if it's at home or at work. You can just see how people thrive in, a, in, a, in another way and also with your kids, which I think is really important. You lift them up when you yeah. understand their personality type instead of making them into your type because you think that's the only really true good type because you can't yeah. see uh, the benefits of other types. So uh, I think I think it's really interesting and great fun also to uh, to actually work with. Yeah. And you know what? You said something really important where it's really not a good idea to try to make your your child, you know, so become someone like you, like you might think, mm -hmm. oh, it's great to be this way. And then you try to push, you know, some of your ideas or some of the, the things that you want to do or you're doing on your child, because that may not be what they want. I've seen mm -hmm. so many, you know, people that, that their parents were like that and they pushed them to do specific mm -hmm. things. And then they got into their adulthood years and they were not happy because they were not, they were not able to develop into the person they really wanted to be. And, you know, that could really, you know, hurt someone's personal development in their adulthood years and cause them to, to be a little bit lost or stuck because they're not happy with who they are. And then they spend time. And sometimes people spend years and decades trying to figure out who they are because they never had the chance to really, you know, figure out that when they were younger. Exactly. And a very interesting thing, thing is that we all kind of, when we we're born until the age of six, kind of look around our parents, our surroundings to work out which personality types should I begin to develop. And from the age of six till 12, we begin to develop the first one. But if the child is not met, as you say, in this personality type, they feel wrong. And, and let's try to do something where they can kind of adapt to what their parents want. And, and that's what you, I mean, exactly what you're saying. Then you have adults walking around going, I'm not really true to myself and I don't know what's wrong and I don't feel comfortable and I'm uncertain or I have low self-esteem or I have all these racing th thoughts or whatever it is. And it all comes down to that you haven't really been embraced in the personality type that you wanted to develop. Yeah. So getting to know these types is, is so amazing for many people. And I think the first step is to find out which personality type am I? And then, yeah. you know, I can actually look at you and say, ah, okay, then you're this type and I can adjust my communication to you and make you feel good and lift you. And, uh, but, but there's, um, there's a lot of um, insights in this uh, tool with personality types and one great thing is it's so easy to use so um, and understand. So th that is that is definitely a great part of the book that uh, people can enjoy if they feel like. For a lot of people, you know, it's very hard for them to even be their own rock because a lot of people mm -hmm. suffer from low self-esteem or they don't feel they just they just feel a lack of self-worth. And you see that all the time in today's society. You know, someone who's struggling, you know, and, and they they may feel not as confident as they should be, but they have everyone has that inner power. We all could get to that point in life. You know, in your own experience, how does someone become their own rock. How do you get from point A to point B to the point where you feel so confident in who you are that you feel like you have enough of strength not only to be to be able to become the person you want to be, but to catch others when they fall because you've gotten to from A from A to B to C and so forth. Hmm, I think I, mean, I think this is such a great question, and it's not just one answer to it because there's so many different elements that you can actually approach and each person have to find their own journey. But I think the most important thing is to actually realize that you're not your own rock, that you want to become your own rock. And in, in that moment, the journey begins because then you're curious finding out, okay, so what is it I'm missing? 
one of the key elements where I always like to start is to look at our core values because our core values is kind of what we're standing on in life, what we put into the, the foundation of our lives. So yeah. if I have a core value, I know what to stand up for. I know what to, to make into my priority when I'm making decisions. I know what is actually really, really important. And in yeah. a world where we have so many choices, I mean, come on, yeah. there's millions of choices. Yeah. If you look at the young people, just finding out which directions to go in life, what to do with their lives, how to become a success. And for us, that's a little bit older. Mm -hmm. There's also many choices all the time. Yeah. And I just find when you get to know your core values, it's much easier to make a choice that you don't regret and you step closer to yourself and ask yourself, what is the most important thing to me that I will not compromise anymore? Yes. So that is a great, it's a great way to start to, to actually become your own rock, to l make this foundation that you stand on where you can be true to yourself. And then I would also say, getting to know your survival mechanisms is, is also good because many people have raising thoughts and worry a lot and think a lot about what will happen in the future and what yeah. will become of us and so many changes. And the more we lose ourselves because we are afraid of things we cannot predict. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, easy, it's, it's very important to come back to the present. And I, I want to share just a simple tool that I find very, very efficient because sometimes what happens is when we have like kind of, let's say we have our conversation, we're talking together right now, this is yeah. here. And then if you say something or I say something, one of us might fall into interpretation because I look at your body language. I hear a little bit of what you're saying. I might misunderstand it. And then I start to interpret what you're actually saying and I connect that in, an emotion to it. And then I'm not really here anymore. As long as we're present, we are here, I'm listening to you, you're listening to me. Mm -hmm. But when we fall into this believing or interpretation, we are not present anymore. We are actually in the future or in the past. Yes. So we're not here. And a lot of people are in this space a lot of the time. And that's where believing and stress and racing thoughts actually uh, are in the brain and what yeah. we can actually do to get out and back into the present is yeah. so simple. We just have to ask one question. What do I know to be true right now? Mm -hmm. That will bring us up. What do I know right now? Yeah. I know I'm having a wonderful conversation with you. I know that we are talking about be, how to be your own rock. Yes. That I, that's about it. I don't know much more. That's what I know. So that's what I'm going to stick to, yes. you know, and it makes it more easy just to come back to the present time right. and just be here right now. What do I know right now? So that's another thing that can actually help us when we, we want to be more true to ourselves and become our own rock to stop all this overthinking and stress in the brain and just try to be present. What is actually happening? Is it something I'm believing or is it something I actually know? That's also good to, to separate those two because we believe a lot of things and... I mean, we don't know. We can't predict the future. Yeah. But it stresses out the brain the most that you cannot predict what is happening. It's really a high stress factor for the brain that we can't predict the future. A lot of people would love to know what is happening in the future. Yeah. But we can't. I mean, there's no, no, nobody knows, which is, is great, but it's also a little bit scary. Yes. And, and that is like one of the biggest problems that I find when I talk to people is that they're constantly worrying about the future. And when I say things like similar to what you had just mentioned, you know, that you have to focus on the present, you have to take your mind of out of the future because you can't worry about something you don't know. And they're like, well, that it sounds a lot easier said than done, you know, and do you have any specific tools that you tell people or that you do for yourself that help people focus their mind in the present and get their mind out of the future? 
But what I do and, and what I find that works is this simple question, what do I know, what do I know right now to be true? You can add yeah. that as well. Because it, it really, when you ask yourself that simple question, it brings you from the present, uh, in, sorry, it brings you into the present from the future or the past. Yeah. So when you're in these spaces, overthinking, worrying about the future, if you say, what do I know to be true right now? Yeah. And then you take a deep breath and then you come back. Because then you focus on what is here and what is real. I I had a funny situation once with uh, a, with actually with Lego. I was uh, I was hosting a, a um, workshop for them and we we're doing it online. And I was waiting nine in the morning. Everybody was supposed to be there and nobody came. Yeah. And uh, I was just watching my mind going, "Where's everybody? Should I be worried? Is it today?" And I was like. What do I know to be true right now? And I said to myself, I know we have an arrangement. I know it's nine o'clock. I know it's on this Zoom link. Yes. And um, and then I, I said to myself also, if they're not here 10 past nine, I'll just call their manager. Because then you have a frame also, which is really good. If this is not happening, I'll do this. And then you're yes. still in the present. Eight minutes past nine. One of the one of the employees entered the, the Zoom meeting and he was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm sorry, I'm late. I was like, you are the first one. He's <laughs> like, Where is everybody? I'm saying, I don't know. I, I really don't know. And he was like, just a second. I think I know where they are. And he just took out, went out of the meeting. And then a few minutes later, he came back and all his colleagues joined as well but they were hanging on a team call um, <laughs> so, so they just they, they were going on another link because they just automatically send out teams links with all their emails and they were just like routine they always go on teams but i prefer zoom so we were on zoom that day but you know my mind could have taken off making all different scenarios of why they weren't there yeah. but just asking this question what do i know right now Right. could actually just calm my brain down, calm me down, and just sit there and wait patiently, enjoying right. myself and uh, <laughs> taking a few deep breaths. <laughs> <laughs> you could do that. I mean, I think most parents, they know this when they're, they're kids, they grow up and they begin to go out uh, with friends to the city and drink and whatever, and they worry all night, would they be all right? Are they coming home? Whatever. And you can just come back and say, what do I know to be true right now? Yeah. And then when you do that, then you breathe and relax. Right. That's all we can do. Yes. And it's also, it's also interesting because the more we worry, the more our thoughts take over, the better the brain will become at it. Yes. We have to retrain the brain to right. actually slow down and let go of all this overthinking yeah. so it's a habit it's a really really destructive habit you can actually get to the state where there's completely silence in your head and there's yeah. no thinking unless you ask your brain to to actually think which is really nice yeah I like that. I like that a yeah. lot. I like yeah. that. And I think too, is like, if you learn to meditate, I think, and you learn to relax, you could actually even meditate in your own space, even at work and you can sure. calm yourself down. So you could learn to maybe do a few breathing exercises and get yourself out of that state of worry and, and the future and bring yourself back into the presence or not focus on the past and, and develop fear from the past, but yeah. just focus on the on the present tense. And, you know, I, I think sometimes that helps as well. How do you like that? How do you like the concept of meditation? I love it. I absolutely love it. And I think a lot of people making, are making it more complicated than it needs to be. The thing is with meditation, you have to, with like everything else, you have to begin to practice it. But, but I, I like active meditations. I always tell people if they have a some stairs in the house or in the office, that's a great place to practice meditation yeah, because, yeah. Uh, I mean, if, if you're in a building with different levels, you will go up and down these stairs yeah. every now and again. And what you have to do is you have to be present, observe your thoughts and observe your body, observe your emotions. Right. And then we're, we're actually beginning to meditate. And when you do that, walking up some stairs, you, you focus because stairs is a little bit complicated. Yes. So you, you actually, it's easier to be present. And then you just feel how your feet are actually landing on the stairs. 
And if you're present, you might be able to do this for two, three seconds to begin with. Mm -hmm. And maybe next week you can do it for 10 seconds. And another week you can actually take five or 10 steps up the stairs and then you can do the whole staircase. Yeah. Such a great thing because if you're in a place with stairs, you can you can just say, whenever I'm going up the stairs, I'm practicing meditation. Right. You don't need to sit down or or try not to think about anything for half an hour or an hour. I think that's where people fail, especially here in the Western world. Mm -hmm. Because as we talked about before, if I sit down and say to my brain, now you can't think of anything for the next hour. Yeah. My brain will begin to organize shopping <laughs> and work and whatever it is. Yeah. It's too hard. We have to do something as well as meditating. So when we do something, it could also be walking your dog or whatever it is. Yeah. You can just this with your feet on the ground is a really good way to get grounded, but also to start meditating. I I really enjoy that. And I I share it with a lot of people and, and a lot of people come back and say, this is actually fun working, walking up the stairs now because yeah. I'm, I'm trying to meditate. <laughs> yeah. I like that idea. That's a great idea. That's the first time I've ever heard that. And I think, mm. it, I think that's a wonderful concept of, of a way to me meditate. I really do. I think that's great. Now, when you talk about, a, you know, be your own rock, what's your definition of being your own rock? My definition is that you rely on yourself, that you have peace inside and you know who you are and what you want in life. So you can, you can actually rely on yourself. A lot of the time we rely on other people. Mm -hmm. So we stay in a, in a relationship because another person is our rock. We yeah. stay in a job because we find safety in our job, but I want you to find safety inside yourself. So you don't so you, so you get the freedom to decide if you want to be in this relationship, if mm -hmm. you want to be in this job, if you want to say yes or no, and you can just rely on yourself. You can rest inside and you are true to yourself every single moment. And you bring in a lot of awareness. So you, it's not about being a perfect human being because I don't believe that any of us are perfect, yeah. but we're all on a journey becoming more and more conscious about who we are. Yes. And when you become your own rock, you, you dare to look at your bad behaviors and difficult things. And, and you know that you have to look inside to, to actually clean up whatever you stored inside of you yeah. to, to get to know yourself better. And I think that's, that's for me, how you become your inner rock, be your, your own rock is, is really to find this steadiness inside that you you really feel i can rely on myself i know i'm true to myself i think that's so important yes that, um, that we can be that i love that i love that now when you were becoming your own rock you look you focus on core values you focus on you know understanding who you are as a person is there a is there a specific way people could start to develop um who they are and be, become their own rock? Are there certain exercises or certain strategies and tools that people can utilize when they want to get to that point? And we talked about going from A to B to C, but are there specific things that people could do as a journal in a good way to like start um, creating, you know, a, 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 a level of self-worth where you can be, you know, start feeling yourself as your own rock and becoming confident and start making decisions for yourself. Are there certain tactics that you suggest that we haven't talked about? I think journaling is always great, especially if you have things that you would like to get out of the system. Writing, I mean, I love writing and, I, and so do you with all your books. So we <laughs> love to write, <laughs> but, but we, you don't have to publish everything. So, right. but this uh, writing is, is just a great way to transform and fall through layers of your personality and getting to know yourself. But I also think that just beginning to be curious. I think curiosity is such a great thing because yeah. when you're curious about yourself, then you start to investigate. Why, are this, why is this happening? Why am I reacting like this? Could mm -hmm. I do something better? And I always say, you know, when we have a situation, something happens, a friend calls you, there's a, something happening, a change at work, whatever it is, then there's an action and there's always a reaction. Mm -hmm. But what I'm aiming towards is that before we, we actually just react, we create what I call a buffer zone. Mm -hmm. And in this buffer zone, 
we can begin to say, pause, re reflect, and zoom out. So yes. pause is like, just take a deep breath before you do anything. Mm -hmm. Then you reflect, what is this doing to me? What is happening inside of me? Am I angry? Am I sad? Am I giving, feeling like giving up? What is, what is happening right now? Yeah. And then I zoom out and I try to work out what is happening inside of you. Yeah. I mean, how, how are you? Why are you saying this to me? And why are you looking like that? And yeah. then I get a I get the freedom of choice. Do I want to go as I always do or do I want to do something different? Yes. And I think that that small thing, which is a great step really, but just becoming aware to pause, relax and zoom, reflect, sorry, pause, reflect and zoom out before you say anything, before you answer, before you do anything is a great way to start seeing how is it I actually react to things? What yeah. is it that I'm feeling? And, and what is happening with other people? Yeah. So it's, it's a very simple tool, but it's really, really powerful when you want to start to to become your own rock and, and bringing this light. I, I, I always see awareness as light because there's a lot of darkness inside of us. And yeah. if we want to see what is happening inside of us, we need to bring some light. And the light just helps us see our patterns and behaviors yeah. and our emotions and makes it a lot easier when we can see what is going on. I love that. I love that. Now, when you, when you look at everything we've talked about today, what are some of the things that you really would love to emphasize to the listeners that you feel is important when it comes to self-development and when it comes to becoming your own rock? I think one very important thing is that we need to take small steps because sometimes we're way too ambitious. When I began my my own journey, you know, it, it, it actually took 10 years of intense therapy and and courses and stuff that I did. And I know people today are so lucky they can make so many shortcuts with all the books and all the trainings and things that are available and and we should really do that yeah. but i think you know just beginning i mean just get started it doesn't have you, you, we never finish as human beings so so just this saying to yourself every single day i'm going to do something where I will get to know myself, get to know myself better. If it's a video, if it's a podcast, it's a book, whatever, I'm just going to invest in myself because I think personal growth is an investment in ourselves. Yes. And for me, you know, I'm always living by a mantra that I call easy is right. Yeah. And I, I, I like that because, you know, a lot of the times we, we struggle in life, we set out a direction and then we just go for it and go for it and go for it. And we struggle and we fight because we, we have this goal and we want to achieve it, but we're not happy getting there yeah. because we're losing ourselves on the way and we're fighting and we might not be present with our family and we might hate our jobs or whatever. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I always, you know, when I aim out for something and I have many goals, but I always do it with ease. And whenever I'm trying to open a door that is locked, I'm, I'm leaving it and I'm looking for another way to move forward. Yeah. It's like, you know, water coming down from a mountain. It will, it will kind of find its way. And if there's a rock in the way, it will go around. But, you know, a lot of human beings, we just start to hit the rock and say, I want to go through yeah. because I decided I want to go through. So I always ask myself, is easy right here? And if it's not easy, it's not right. And yeah. that's also with personal development. It doesn't have to be hard. Right. It doesn't have to be a struggle. Whatever you are going to find inside of yourself, you have already survived. Yeah. So we cannot find anything that will kill us or hurt us because we have survived it already. Yeah. So I think, you know, just beginning on this amazing journey of, of getting to know yourself better is, is really the most important thing. And, and then make it easy. Don't make it hard. Don't make it a struggle. Make it easy. So find, if you love to listen to audiobooks, that's what you're going to do. If you love to listen to podcasts like yours, that's what you're going to do. If you love reading, that's what you're going to do. Yeah. So find the way that that is easy for you to get started and enjoy the process because yeah. it's, I mean, it's, it's very important that we enjoy personal development. It yeah. doesn't need to be a struggle. 
Oh, hundred percent. I love it. Now tell everybody about the services you provide, all the different things that you do. Well, you know, I write I write all the books, um, and I have I think I, right now I have four books. I actually have three novels that uh, great stories with a lot of personal growth inside of them, and then I have Be Your Own Rock. And apart from that, you know, I I have uh, all my lectures in companies and also internationally in companies and my speaking engagement where I try to inspire people in rewiring their brain more positive and looking at changes in different ways. So yeah. I'm truly enjoying also all these uh, speaking engagements all over the world, which I, I think is just so much fun. <laughs> I love it. Now, where can people find your book on how to be, become your own rock? Well, it's on Amazon, and it's um, it's also actually just released as an audiobook on all the places where you get audiobooks. You can actually find it as well. Oh, excellent! And, yeah, it's, it's, and it's the first book that I actually narrated myself, so I'm, I'm I was really excited to uh, to release it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I, I think I, I like it, so I hope people will enjoy it too. But I think it's just so important that if you are able to do it as an author, I think it, it just brings you a little bit closer to the book if you actually narrate it yourself. Mm -hmm. So the books, yeah, the eBooks are on Amazon. You can find, I mean, you can order the paperback and the hardback in any, any store in the, in the U S and they will, um, they will order it in. So anywhere really you can, you can find it. And also with the book, you get a free handbook. Um, where, where there's a lot of exercises. And actually, as you were saying before, there's a lot of steps on becoming your own rock. So so it's actually a, a download, 54 pages, extra pages you get free with the book and also a free course in finding your core values that are added for people as well to make it easy to find these core values. Oh, so that's, uh, that's there as well. And on top of that, there's a personality test. So... So, um, and in, I don't know when, we're just waiting at the moment, but really, really soon there will be um, an app for a personality test as well. You can just mm -hmm. download to your phone and uh, take this test and find out what personality type you are. And there will be a lot of great advice on how to work with your personality type and other people as well. So, oh, uh, yeah, that should be fun. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I find it very, all, all that stuff I find very intriguing, especially when we talk about different types of personalities and how our brain functions and what triggers us and what doesn't trigger us. It, it, it's really, I think it's very important to understand your personality type and others. And when you mm. familiarize with all of them can really make a big difference on, you know, your, the improvement you have in communication and how you, you can even enhance your personal life, your work life and, and do do unbelievable things just by understanding your your different types of um, personality types and 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 uh, and understanding yourself too. Um, and I also, uh, where can people find you? Where where will be the best place for people to go if they want to learn more about you and your services and your book? The best place to go is uh, Facebook, uh, Saga Constantine author, and the same with Instagram. I'm mm -hmm. there as well. Uh, see, I'm Danish. We don't use Twitter or X. Um, so, so I'm not that much on, on those media, but Facebook and Instagram, and then my website, sagaconstantine.com, where you can also find the personality test as well, and uh, which is absolutely free. So people can go there. And there's a test already now. If the app, when you're listening to this, if the app is not released by Apple, then uh, there's a test there they can do as well for free, for, of course. And I have, the, I have the book here, so you know what to look for. So this is how it looks. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Your rock. So I love it. Have it. Yeah. And it, it matches the colors. Your, <laughs> all your colors. <laughs> matches your shirt, too. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I thought about that one. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, so we're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
gosh. Well, this has been an absolute pleasure, Saga. I'm so glad that you came on the show today. I'm glad that you shared all this. This is something that is really important because a lot of people struggle to be in their own rock. And a lot of people want to be, they wish they could be, but they're, you know, they're, they, they think they can't, or they think they're stuck and they just don't know how to go from one extreme extremity to the next. And, and, you know, so I really appreciate you coming on the show, sharing all this information and taking your time out to write the book, which is a very valuable resource for anybody. And it also, you know, even if you think you are your own rock, it could make you even better. And that, you know, we all strive to, to you know, uh, want to be better, most of us. And and that's, you know, the pe listeners on this station, I know uh, they want to be better. That's why they listen to us. And, and so having that book, I think, is such a valuable resource. And I, I thank you for taking the time to write that book. And once again, I thank you so much for being on the show. This has been an incredible experience. And I'm so glad that you took the time out to, to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I, I really enjoyed it. It's so wonderful to meet you. Oh, same here. Same here. Well, you have a great day. And the same to you. Take care and have a great travel uh, uh. holiday. Make sure to relax a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. Great. Thank great. You, you have okay. a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.